Welcome to Chapter 6 of the Creating Lighting Fixture GTF video series. Your fixture is almost finished. This chapter covers the final steps of creating your GTF, setting up macros, the fixture summary, and testing your file. As with the previous chapters, you can jump to specific subjects with the display timestamps. Macros or control macros are predefined commands that trigger functions in the lighting fixture. The most common example is lamp on and off commands. Typically, macros affect several of the fixture's attributes with specific DMX values and DMX signal durations. Define control macros for each mode of the light. Each macro is a child of an existing DMX mode. New macros are added to a mode by hitting the Add Macro option. Each macro has a name and a display resolution. The macro's DMX values can be displayed either as a timeline or as a table. Set the bike shifting toggle when converting different DMX display resolution values to match the channel attribute control resolution, for example, from percentage to 16 bit. Add channels to the macro and set the DMX value that the macro applies to them. Channels display as rows with a DMX value for each time window. Steps define the duration or time window that a DMX value will be applied to the specified channel. In table mode, each step is a column, and in timeline mode, each column is a half second, with the step being displayed as a colored bar covering the step's defined duration. Let's take a quick look at how this works for setting up a lamp on macro in the generic moving head template. In the macros page, mode one is visible. Hit Add Macro, name it Lamp On, and set the resolution to be 8-bit. Before adding any channels, change into table mode. Normally a Lamp On function will be in the control channel. Since this is an example moving head and doesn't have a control channel in the DMX mode, let's use Beam Dimmer for this. Set the duration to 3 seconds. Click on the cell next to Beam Dimmer and add the DMX value for the lamp on. In this case, 250. If the macro requires a second channel, such as a specific shutter setting, this process would then be repeated to add the shutter channel with the appropriate DMX value. Here's an example of a Roby fixture that has this already set up. The final step in creating any GDTF is error checking. There are a number of different things that need to be checked, such as the basic configuration of the geometries, the DMX mapping and modes, data errors, and of course, does the light actually behave in the way you expect when it's compared to the real world version? Let's have a look at how the builder can help you check for errors. It will automatically highlight certain types of errors for you, displaying a yellow warning icon, an error message, or a red highlight on the item that has the error, depending on which part of the builder you're in. A good example of an automatic error message in the geometries pane is this yellow icon on the base geometry. When the geometry is selected, the properties display the related error message. In this case, that there is no DMX mode linked to the top level geometry. Another example of how the builder can help you is with overlapping DMX channels in a DMX mode. They will be highlighted red until they're corrected. Other checks have to be done outside of the builder including making sure the GDTF functions as expected when used with a lighting console or in a pre-visualization environment. It's a good idea to check the console and pre behavior directly against the physical fixture. Another tool that can help error checking is the summary page of the builder. Having an overview of the complete DMX map of the fixture enables you to easily check that all features and attributes are present, have been correctly configured and correctly grouped. At the top of the summary is a list of all current DMX errors. Click on the list entry to jump to the channel or attribute with a DMX error. Attributes, activation groups, and feature groups are summarized so they can be checked at a glance. The DMX mode overview displays the channel cards for the mode selected in the dropdown. Like the mode overview on the DMX page, you can click on a channel to jump into its page. DMX channels by geometry give a quick way of checking the geometry and channel associations are correct. Last is the revision history of the file, displaying the dates when the file has been revised or edited. Once the GDTF has been checked, 
and any errors corrected, hit the next button to upload the GDTF to the share. This will also save a copy to your computer. Make sure to name the revision, and if it's a release version, turn off the work in progress checkbox. You can come back at any point to further revise your GDTF and edit it as needed. So it's a good idea to use the revision name to help describe what has changed in that revision. This brings us to the end of this chapter and to the end of the Creating Lighting Fixture GTTF video series.